Hello, and welcome to another edition of Hot Takes for the This Had Better Work podcast. My name is Craig. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we get into it, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this podcast. It helps us grow, and we really appreciate it. Also, please don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, your work associates, family, whomever. Lastly, we're always looking for people to join the conversation. So, Uh, Please reach out if you ever want to be involved in a future regular episode of the This Had Better Work podcast. We would love to have you on. Okay, let's get into it. There are three reasons why I would never own an electric vehicle, and I'll state those right now. The first one is the cost. These electric vehicles that are coming out the, the price is starting to come down more in line with regular price vehicles. Even that's not saying a lot, though, because a lot of these regular price vehicles, in quote, are still thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollars, which is, you know, expensive for a car. Um, a friend of mine and I were talking about some of the car payments that people were making, and it's becoming the norm to pay five, six, seven hundred dollars a month just for the car payment. That's not including the insurance. Cars are expensive and electric vehicles are no exception. They are expensive vehicles. That is one thing that is keeping me from even considering an electric vehicle. The second thing is the amount of time that it takes to fuel or to charge up the vehicle. These manufacturers are trying to convince us that waiting 20 or 30 minutes is fine. You know, you can can wait 20 or 30 minutes. You can just sit back and read a book, go on Instagram, you know, catch up on the news, you know, just sit and chill for 20, 30 minutes out of your day uh, to charge this vehicle up. I, I, I can't do that. A few weeks ago, I was running low on gas as I was coming home from work one day and I was tired. I just didn't feel like stopping. So I said in the morning on my way to work, I'll get gas. So the next morning I woke up had totally forgotten about that I needed to get gas. I got in the car and said, oh, shoot, I forgot to get gas. I have to get that this morning. So it was rainy. It was cold. It was pitch black outside, but I had no choice. I needed to get gas. So I went to the gas station. And as I was putting gas in the vehicle, I said to myself, if this were an electric vehicle and I had to stop for 20 minutes on the low end to put to charge it up, there would be no way. I, I would be late for work. I, I just don't have the luxury of that much time to spend doing that. So that's my second reason why I would not have an electric vehicle or own one or purchase one. Lastly, the one is the more... Now, before I go, before I get to my last point, I will say this. There are some car companies out there that are looking to address that uh, fuel or the, the charging situation. There's a company out of California called Ample, and they have um, a, it says on their site, it's ample.com, it says Ample is a new energy delivery solution for electric vehicles. It uses modular battery swapping to deliver 100% charge to any EV in a few minutes. So they swap out the battery and the time that it takes for, the, for you to pull into their service solution station, get the battery pulled down, the new one put in, is between three and five minutes from what I've been reading for Ample. There's also another company in China called NIO. And uh, NIO is a Chinese multinational automobile manufacturer, headquarters in Shanghai. Shanghai uh, was founded in 2014. And they have the same type of technology where they are swapping the batteries out. They you pull into the bay, uh, machine goes under your car, pulls the other ba- the old battery down, puts the new battery in, three to five minutes, you're good to go. That's about the same amount of time that it takes to fuel up a regular gas-powered vehicle. I'm behind that. I, I That makes perfect sense to me. If that were the standard of technology that, of how these cars would be, are going to be charged up, I'm all for it. Even if I didn't own an electric vehicle, I would still look at Ample and or Neo as possible investment opportunities simply because I believe that this may be where the technology could go. There's a potential. We don't know what's going to win out in the end, but I think that these two companies and, and other companies like them who are trying to be innovative, 
trying to think of other ways of doing things as opposed to these charging stations, they may be onto something that we may, or myself, may want to be involved in from the outset. The last one I just recently, the, the last reason why I would not own an electric vehicle is something that I came across just recently. This is uh, on YouTube from 8 News Now out of Las Vegas. And the title of this particular news story is The Hidden Cost of Owning Electric Vehicles. In this story, there was a guy who owns an electric vehicle and he went to get a repair and uh, from the manufacturer of the vehicle and the insurance company that he had been paying his premiums to said, no, you know, don't take it to the manufacturer, take it to one of our pre-approved repair uh, stations or service stations. He just said, no, I, I can't do that. I have to actually take it back to the manufacturer. A lot of these cars, not only electric cars, but hybrids and gas powered vehicles are, they have so much technology built into the car that if, even if one part of it gets damaged, it affects other systems within the car. Other systems need to be recalibrated. Other systems need to be replaced as well. Uh, other systems get damaged. There's a there's a reverberation that goes through the car or at least parts of the car when even a certain section of the car gets damaged. For example, if the side view mirror gets damaged, it's not just a matter of replacing the side view mirror. A lot of times, and especially in these newer vehicles, they have these rear uh, view cameras, these blind side cameras. And so there's there's a camera in the side view mirror that has to be fixed. Uh, some of these side view mirrors are adjustable. You just push a button and it folds out, it folds in. So once that uh, side view mirror gets damaged, there may be some mechanisms in the side view mirror that also get damaged that need to be replaced. So something that may cost $120 to get repaired or replaced is now potentially a four, $5,000 repair. And insurance companies are saying, no, we're, we're, we're capping this. No, we're not paying $5,000 to repair a, to replace a side view mirror. Now, even if you're paying four or $500 a month in premiums to an insurance company, they can say no. Some of these insurance companies are saying, no, we're, we're, we're capping this amount. And on top of that, you have to go to one of our pre-approved service stations to get these cars repaired. Many of these electric vehicle manufacturers, again, are saying, no, you have to bring it back to us or else you'll avoid the warranty. We can't, you know, we can't go by someone who's not a pre-approved Tesla uh, manufacturer to repair a vehicle. They may not have the technology. They may not have the skill. They may not have the uh, equipment, the ability to, to test all the sensors that are affected in the car. It just becomes too much. And some of these insurance companies are refusing to cover electric vehicles at all. You know, they're not capping. They're not saying you have to go to a certain place. They're just not approving the vehicle at all. So those are three things that are kind of keeping me from even considering the idea of owning an electric vehicle. Maybe those things will change. I'm sure they will change as the electric vehicles, vehicles become even more popular and more prevalent in our society. Things will get better. Uh, I'm sure it was the same thing with gas powered vehicles when people were <laughs> were riding on horses. No, I just feed my horse and my horse takes me where I want to go. Now you're saying I have to get in the car, I have to give it gas, I have to find a gas station, all these other things that were hiccups and problems in the very beginning when we were introducing gas powered vehicles to the road. Same things are happening with the electric vehicles. Uh, but right now, I just, again, I just can't, I'll stick with the horse that I have. I'll stick with the gas powered vehicle that I have uh, until, you know, things get to the point where it makes more sense to own an, an EV. So what are your thoughts? Would you own an electric vehicle? Do you have an electric vehicle right now? What are the pros and cons that you have seen so far as an electric vehicle owner that say it's worth it or it's not worth it? Or if you don't have an electric vehicle, why don't you have one? What's keeping you from getting one? Are you just not interested? Is there nothing out there out there that's uh, catching your eye? Uh, what's keeping you from owning an electric vehicle or even considering owning an electric vehicle? Please let us know in the comments. Let's get that discussion going. Thanks again for listening. Uh, please remember to give us a big thumbs up before you go. Uh, this has been another hot take for the This Had Better Work podcast. My name is Craig. 
Thank you so much and have a great day.